。いや、皆さん、おは、こんばんにちは。今日はね、ちょっと卓球でもやろうかなと思って、卓球バットを2つ作ったから、一緒にやらないか。なんだってあ、穴が開いてるから玉がそのまま通っちゃうああ、鋭いね、お前たち。さすが俺のサブスクライバーたちだね。<笑> Anyway, back to the plane.、Um, I've glued the cage here all together. It's a little bit heavier than I would have liked, of course, with that plywood.、Um, but actually, I took some photos along the way, so I think I'll just show you those and then we'll catch up to present day after that. So, I finished cutting all the carbon fiber for the little、uh, rocket ship shaped thingies on the <laughs> motor mounts. Looks a bit like a rocket taking off, ready to take off, doesn't it?、Um, and then I did some hot wire cutting to make these pieces, which are going to go there, like that. And originally I did that out of one piece of 50 or yeah, about 50 centimeters wide piece, and I was going to chop it in the middle. And I was actually thinking I might be able to. Dig out some of the back here and, and just sort of slot it over the top, but、um, it's going to be too fiddly, I think. And also, as with my、um, other experience that I've tried, when I do wider cuts like that, it doesn't go very well. And you can see this big gouge there. It's just very difficult to make the wire stay straight and stop it from、uh, wavering and wiggling in the middle and when the, the sides are so far apart.、Um, so I gave up on that, unfortunately. but When I went back to these, these are like 25 centimeters or 22 centimeters wide. It goes so much better, and it's, the, the result you get is just way, way better. And I also realized that I'm probably going to want to sand this as one big piece, so I made the templates bigger the second time I tried this. So, I, well, these templates were actually the same on the ends, but I needed templates in here now. Anyway, so it's one millimeter bigger overall, so I can sand on it a little bit better. Um, and that also means that there's less stress when you're doing the hot wire cut because you know you have another millimeter、e uh, leeway before anything's going to go really wrong. So I'm just getting ready to glue the nose halves together, or most of them. So those parts are glued together. And、uh, just put a little bit of fiberglass in here to strengthen that side wall because that's going to be the part that takes quite a lot of impact when you're doing a, a belly landing, I think. And this、uh, strengthening or、um, hardening. Ridge piece that goes under the nose.、I、ended up with two pieces of plywood, two thicknesses of plywood there. It was only supposed to be one, but I made a mistake when I was cutting one of these、um, cutouts that it goes into, went too deep. So I thought,、uh, I'll just double it up and make the other side deeper as well so that it'll fit all right. And this is already kind of thin, and so I thought it might not be a bad idea to reinforce it. The reason it's so thin,、um, obviously, you'd want it to be a, a bit thicker than that, like a bit deeper, like that, because when you hit the nose on the ground, you're taking force in that direction, like if I, if I press down on it, like that. And it's very thin to do that, but the reason is because when I discovered how damn heavy this plywood was, I went around the whole plane and made all of the plywood parts about as small as they could reasonably be. So it's probably not a bad idea to have this like, doubled up like that.、Um, And then when it goes together, this is the battery tray with some cutouts for a Velcro strap to go on. And they have their cutouts there, so the strap is going to like slide under just like I do on my smaller planes. I think that'll work alright. 
on the main spar, I did eventually end up putting some glass on the outside of that, just like that. And the main reason was so that when I glue the foam on for the wings, the glue is not going to go into those cutouts there. It's going to have, uh, it won't go in the cutouts and it'll have more area to stick onto here. Uh, and I put a bit of 100 gram glass across the middle section here as well, just because there's some of the foam was cut out there and uh, just sort of, this is where it needs to be strongest, so it's kind of annoying that that was missing now. Uh, hopefully that will cover for that. And on the ends here, I'm going to stick a bit of um, plywood over there. So this is just where those um, wingtip extension or the rest of the spar uh, sticks into like that and I've reinforced these with carbon down the sides and also glass across there just to for the same reason just to stop glue from getting into that those holes and the point of this bit that was just on there is to well if we look at what I did for the fuselage it's to stop that stop the prong from coming out that way and also when we glue the foam on here there's going to be a whole lot of glue going on like that and again we don't want to get glue in the hole where this is supposed to go because I've tweaked it with my sandpaper to be just a nice smooth easy yet snug fit and it feels really good so I just want to, just want to keep it that way and not get it all clogged up with glue until now on most of my planes I've been using this Red Raven glass here the 50 gram one and this has been my uh, material of choice because it's very nice and silky smooth and the weave is very uniform and quite tight um, and it was fairly reasonably priced but unfortunately the place that I got this from here in New Zealand they don't stock it anymore the guy said that there's just not really enough demand they have 25 and 100 um, so that's what I got next I wasn't really thinking this would work out too well and sure enough it didn't um, <laughs> It's just too heavy, which means it takes up more resin and it's harder to work with. And also the fact that I bought this as a roll um, makes it, as soon as you cut it off the roll in fairly small pieces like this, it just goes whoop and it tries to curl up again. Uh, any of you people out there that use rolls regularly, can you tell me, is it always like that? Like, am I going to get halfway through the roll and it's going to get better? I don't, I don't think so. It just seems like it's going to always do that. I think if you had a really big piece it wouldn't do that but I don't deal with really big pieces that much so this is just super annoying and I don't think I'm really going to be using that a lot at all unfortunately. Uh, so the next thing I went back to and what I used on the tail like the horizontal stabilizer and the rudder and everything so far is this glass that I just happened to have from a few years ago that I bought on Hobby King and this is 48 gram or 49 gram and it's just not quite as nice as the other one. The weave is a little bit more inconsistent. It seems like some of the rows are wide and then they're close. And in general, they're not as tightly packed as the other one is either. Um, but it's pretty good. Um, but then I had a look around on AliExpress and I found this, which just arrived yesterday. And I was quite pleased with this. It's basically as good as the Red Raven, as far as I can tell. So this is 50 gram. Um, yeah. I haven't used it yet, but it looks great, and it was also quite cheap. They're selling this for 18 US dollars for 5 meters, and that's not 1 meter wide roll, that's um, 1.2 meter wide roll, so it's 1.2 by 5 meters for 18 US dollars. And they also have this, which is another thing that I've found very hard to get in New Zealand. Occasionally the place that I get the Red Raven, or used to get the Red Raven from locally has this, but most of the time they don't, so every time I... Uh, buy I check if they have it and usually they don't but anyway so I got 20 meters of that as well which is it 20 meters I hope so and I got uh, also two of those so I got 10 meters of that should be enough to get through this plane and then some um, so that's the place on AliExpress that I got it they shipped it really quickly too like basically the next day um, yeah anyway that's the place if you want to get some cheap fiberglass that's quite good I'm just about to glue this main cage piece together and at times like this I find myself sitting here for ages worrying about if I'm doing things in the right order because there's no instructions. That's one of the real struggles with making your own scratch build like this. <laughs> and I'm worrying that if I do the wrong thing in the, in the wrong order or things in the wrong order then I'm going to have to come back and like break something open or try and unglue something that's glued and yeah it just, uh, just sort of paralyzes me for a while before I take a step like this. 
Anyway, I made these formers in here because another thing I was a little bit concerned about was how much sway there is. Uh, there's another one of these at the back, which is what's stopping it swaying at the moment, but they're not going to be glued in. They're just there to um, stop it from racking or swaying too much while it's being glued. Um, it's just a little bit of... <laughs> I had to put a, a bit of wood on each side like that so that it would stand up, otherwise they just constantly kept falling over. It was really annoying. Anyway, so I'm going to tack this together with a bit of CA and then I'll come back with um, epoxy and glue them all a little bit more solidly. And I'm also going to put at some places a piece of 12mm square on like that. And the idea with that is that it will help prevent that racking that I was just talking about. And also I'm going to let it overhang by a bit at the end like that. So that's going to go into... Uh, cavities in the front pieces, so that's the nose ready to be well, ready for the next step, it's all dry now and that will increase the strength in the join between the middle section and the front section uh, is the idea. It's only wood on uh, like a small piece of wood onto a small piece of foam so it's not the greatest but better than nothing I think. So this central payload cage ended up weighing 677 grams which is a fair bit more than the original less than 500 or so that I was estimating um, but I've added quite a bit of extra stuff, so these reinforcing bits down the side, these bits to keep it square and also reinforce the front bit. So if you do a hard belly landing, I'm expecting that most of the stress is going to come in this area. Um, but um, I'm quite happy with it other than the weight. Everything's fitting together quite nicely. So I'll just put it together a bit so I can show you how it all goes. So I'm just about to glue, uh, not all of these, but some of these pieces in uh, with Gorilla Glue, of course. So. At the top there's not actually much, there's just these two bits here and they have a, a gap sanded underneath them so I can pass wires. We're going to need to pass wires down there to the tail and this one also um, we need the battery wire to come into the front from there so there's a gap on that one. Uh, the bottom, nothing much going on on the bottom, a little bit more reinforcing across the middle so this is right under the spar, which is where possibly possibly the 5 kilo payload is going to be, hopefully. Uh, so that sits on there. And then I've got one of the <coughs> sides on. And all these holes and cavities are cut just, just right to fit on there nicely. Goes on like that. Um, and then it all sort of rounds off quite nicely. Along like that. There's a little bit sticking out there, so I'll have to sand carefully the plywood down so that it matches everything. That was actually by design. Um, it's a bit hard to make the plywood like not do that, so I just made it do that and then I'll sand it. And then the spar uh, is going to go, it's going to have to slide in from the top like this. And fits in there pretty nicely. I don't really like the fact that there's no physical barrier preventing it from coming up like this. So it's it's only going to be glue that holds the whole weight of the fuselage and the wing together. But over the last few years I've become more confident in um, adhesives in general. So this time I'm willing to <coughs> trust, um, trust it to be just glue. And then these bits at the front here, those bits are going to connect to the front with the cavities in the nose. And uh, also, also a little bit extra going from the front towards the back on this bit. Uh, so this is just the um, where are you? double plywood bit in there. Goes a little bit extra, so this is going all the way from the very front of the plane to here. And... And of course it doesn't line up perfectly, so all the way around it's going to need a little bit of sanding to make things match nicely. Okay, I glued these table tennis bats to their side panels and I went fairly heavy with the glue on this because this section of contact here, or, well there's actually a little bit missing there, so it's just that section of contact there, is all that's going to be supporting the tail. And the tail weighs 620 grams at the moment with all the parts, but it's probably going to be more like 750 by the time glasses on there and servos are in. 
so yeah, we want to make sure that there's enough support for it from these. And I'm going to have to put them in there, uh, in in their positions like that when I glue that inside them, just to make sure that these two prongs end up parallel. Because if I if I took them out and glued them onto there separately, the prongs might end up a little bit splayed out or a little bit pigeon toed or whatever. Nice snug fit, which is good. Yeah, both sides will just have to be squeezed on. And hopefully after the glue sets, those two prongs will just stay <laughs> where they were. I'm just fitting these hot wire cut leading edge sections into the wing, checking how they fit and cutting out a little bit of um, space around the motor mounts for them to slide in there. And as you can see, they're a little bit big because I'm hoping to use these as a template to sand across the whole top or at least across like half of the wing there to keep them nice and straight and I'll take that tube out of course when I sand uh, but anyway this is just just sort of sitting in there at the moment but we needed to cut out a little bit like that in a certain shape and that leaves us with um, the tube down which our wires can go and then on the rear side of that, oh, it's a bit dark down there but uh, so down there is where our wires are going to go to the central section down the inside of the spar and I'll have to glue this on hmm, I think I'll have to glue this on before I glass the wing, it would be nice if I could have these bits not there when I'm glassing the wings so that I could just put one big piece of glass around the leading edge like that but then I'd have to glue this in afterwards and it could be done but I'm just worried that I would get glue like it wouldn't make such a great joint because you can't you won't be able to see what you're doing I won't be able to see any of this after the glass is on um, and this is quite an important glue joint needs to be strong so I think I'll just um, glue it in first and then I'll have to glass around it with the motor mount sticking out like that. It's just a little bit inconvenient. Um, and on the inside here, I don't know if we're going to be able to see very well, but... Okay, so you can see the top half of the channel is clear. The bottom half is blocked off. Um, so it's not really ideal, but all we need to get past that point there is one wire for the ailerons because uh, the motor, motor wires are going to be going out here so they don't really get blocked by those prongs there prongs are going to the all the way to the back um, I wanted them to be that way for an extra bit of glue contact at the back and also to help keep them straight hopefully that was the idea wow look at this fits in there nicely. So this is how this fits on now. Um, Fairly easily slides in there, and when it's in, when I let it go like that, it drops back about two millimeters at the top. It's not like a perfect fit, but it's about as tight as I would want it to get it on and off all the time. Oh dear, I was cutting out some more carbon pieces for the motor mounts and had a bit of a problem with this little CNC machine or the uh, water system <laughs> seems to have leaked out. Maybe it's just where the um, seal at the back there, maybe that wasn't sealed properly anymore because there is quite a bit of liquid in, in that region there. Anyway, of course, where did, where did gravity make this go? Exactly in the worst possible spot, right on top there, as you can see, a little bit of water going into the uh, power supply for the spindle. So of course that stopped working 
and the motor stopped spinning and then the tool bit broke and uh, we didn't finish the job there unfortunately <laughs> so that's going to set me back a couple of weeks because I don't have any more of those tool bits and I don't think you can find them in New Zealand at least not at any price that I'll be willing to pay for so those are going to have to come from overseas um, and this kind of does make me more inclined to now set up the big machine to do carbon fiber with the water runoff somehow at the back uh, the reason I wasn't using it already was that um, it's just not not set up for it um, and this one was ready to go uh, so yeah that's kind of a bummer so this is the flat linkage that I've ended up with I'm just using four of those robot hinge pin things originally the plan was to have the hinge way out uh, underneath the flap so you can see that little bit there right about the middle of the screen there that's in the center of that rounded sections where the pivot was going to be so that when it uh, when the flap goes back it actually goes backwards quite a bit and down at the same time um, but the more I thought about how it was going to actually be made and how much it would weigh and how awkward it would be to make I decided that I would probably be just better off using plain flaps like this like I have on the elevator so I started to design it that way and then it occurred to me that I could just shift the um, the pin outwards like that and it would still have enough secure like contact with the foam and the plywood and everything especially if I had four of them on there it would be plenty strong enough and as soon as that came into my mind that idea I realized that I've seen dozens of planes where people have done this already so I don't know why I just didn't think of this to begin with but anyway this um, not quite sitting in there very well on this one unfortunately I might have to sand out this this pocket in here a slight bit more um, but yeah this is hopefully going to be lighter and simpler and we still get most of the effect of like you're trying to get a sort of a nozzle at the back there when it's at full deflection like like that one is there and then there's a gap through there so the <clears throat> air is going to come squirting out the back hopefully to re-energize the uh, boundary layer or whatever <laughs> special words are um, and then this will go I also hadn't really thought much about a rear spar so what I've ended up with is just this um, 10 millimeter wooden dowel that goes through there and then it's going to come into here I decided I'd cut this with the CNC this gr uh, groove down there to get it in the, exactly the right place and depth and that's going to go through the holes of some of those mounting plates for the hinge so everything should be in fairly good contact um, connect, well connected to the fuselage and I'm not going to be able to do this with one hand but um, it's kind of nice that that dowel is wood instead of carbon because it needs to bend a little bit if I want to slide this oops something fell down if I want to slide this along there um, it needs to bend because I've got this this section here where the um, the wingtip spar goes in is a little bit thicker and if um, if this wasn't able to bend then I wouldn't be able to slide it down but anyway going to work out alright. Um, here we have the revised motor mount and the main reason I did it this way was because I didn't like the way that those longer longer ons whatever uh, if they were going all the way from here to here it gave them quite an opportunity to get twisty and weak um, but if they're half as long like this they're not too bad even in wood although I will be making these of carbon fiber um, but replacing the part of it there with a tube meant that the twistiness was not an issue at all and it also let me make it in two parts so I'm just gonna have a plate on the front like that and that's what I was making I was in the middle of making this out of carbon when the um, the tool piece broke on my little CNC machine unfortunately but what this lets me do is because they're in two parts uh, let's say I have a different motor sometime in the future I get a a larger motor or one that can run on 6S instead of the ones that I have um, I can just change this piece here with the bolt pattern it's probably gonna have to change and then this bit can be you know removed and replaced with something else um, and I'm hoping that I can fit the ESC inside this that's why it's sort of a empty space in the middle uh, I'm not sure if that's gonna happen but if not the ESC will just have to go on top like it did on Big Red
Okay, I have fiberglass on the just on the flap side at the moment, and this bit here I'm going to glass together with the rest of the main wing all together. But it's turning out quite nice. I'm pretty pleased with it. So the linkage or the pivoting is working exactly how I intended, and it has this nice sort of solid clicking almost into place. And there's no ambiguity about that final position. It's like that's exactly where it should be. Um, if we look here, it's closing out that gap pretty well, as it should. I mean, these were both CNC machined to match each other. And here we have a gap that also closes up pretty well. And at this end, oh, that's a little bit open because uh, the pin, these robot hinges are not glued in at the moment. But I think if they were glued in, it would go kind of like that and seal that gap up as well. Um, which is exactly what we want, I think. And we have a servo mount preparation there. I'm going to cut that out after I glass this side. And I put another spar in here. This is a 2 by 10 millimeter pull truded carbon strip. Quite a hefty one. Uh, and the point of that is so that the this uh, axis or whatever you want to call it down here, will remain as straight as possible even when the wing is bending under load or it shouldn't be bending too much hopefully and the point of that is so that these points here don't get too far out of line these four robot hinge points because if that gets curved let's say we open the flaps and then we're coming into land and there's a lot of load on the wing if that gets curved um, it might end up that we can't move the flap one way or the other it might just get stuck in position <laughs> and if one of them gets stuck and the other one doesn't, that could be kind of a disaster. So on the top side here we have uh, space for a wooden dowel to go through and those CNC cut plates also have a hole in them so everything's going to connect together quite nicely. And this is the dowel 10mm one. And the main point of this was to have a better connection with the fuselage. So this is going to go all the way through the fuselage through to the other wing. Um, that also helps make sure everything's in the right place. But mainly I just didn't trust only having a foam connection here and the glass on top. I wanted to have something inside as well. And this pull truded spar that I was just talking about, this doesn't actually go through the middle. It's just um, on the bottom, of course. It's just, just to help keep that flap um, pivot line straight. One of the awkward things about this type of hinge is that the pivot point for these are it's kind of floating out in the middle of nowhere. And for example, on the elevator and rudder, that's not the case. And the linkage just looks like this. So when you push and pull on this with the servo or with your finger, um, it, it turns just fine. But if you... Um, so this is the servo horn that I'm going to put in here. This bit with all the holes at the bottom will be embedded into the wing. And then the pivot point, which is the hole uh, just there at the tip of my finger, that's going to be floating in the middle of nowhere. And when you push and pull on that, it's not really going to behave so nicely because it's going to try and push the whole thing back. It might work, but I just don't really trust it to work um, without having a little bit more support. So what I could have done is put this servo back here, maybe I should have done that actually, and then this could glue directly onto where this hinges here, and then it would have the support that it needs. But I wanted to make it so that the servo was pushing and pulling at this aerodynamic center of pressure of this uh, piece here, so that it has the same area on the left and the right sides. Uh, so I'm going to need another support point, which I'm going to do with this, another piece of FR4. It's Quite good stuff this actually, it's 2 millimeters, easy to work with and fairly cheap. It just takes a while to get here from China of course. Let me know if I can get this locally by the way, that would be nice. It's also going to connect with that carbon spar there like that, just to make sure it's in the right place. But it's going to be here of course, or around about here somewhere. And so that point on the left here will line up with this axis and then the servo will be able to push and pull with something to base its leverage on. So I finally came up with a method of fixing the tail on that is satisfactory. I don't really like it a whole lot still, but this is what I'm going to go with. It's quite simple and light. So I just have a piece of 2mm FR4 uh, with a 3mm bolt going through it, and it goes into another piece of FR4 on the other side, which is glued onto the tail. And if we just look at the one on the opposite side over there, hopefully we can focus there. There we go. 
so that one is stuck on onto the rear, the, the tail side. And I'm not going to be able to access that nut there on the back. So what I'll have to do is build up a little bit of a captive nut sort of thing using these plates of um, FR4. Um, it probably wasn't clear what I meant there with uh, using this to make a captive nut. But you've got three of those discs and two of them are hexagonal holes in the middle. And you just stack them up over the nut like that and then stick that onto the inside of here. It's a bit wacky but I think it will work. By the way, the reason I didn't come up with this idea earlier was because I didn't have this FR4 to play around with. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of it here now. And so I would have had to do it with plywood and I just didn't really trust having plywood up against the screw, especially with the screw has a thread on it which can sort of cut a little bit into the wood. Um, and that's one reason I'm using this um, kind of system here so that the it's not just the thread of the screw pressing against the inside of that hole because eventually over time that will wear away as well but now it's going to be pressing up against what's well, going to be the th th thread screw is going to be inside the nut and then the nut's going to be pressing on that so it won't be just the thread um, by the way this here I got a one and two and three millimeter thicknesses um, which are pretty nice actually it's good quality stuff but it gets heavy quite quickly have a guess how much this 10 by 15 centimeter by 3 millimeter piece weighs. 100 grams. Pretty heavy. Okay, I'm going to have a go at cutting this carbon fiber dry on the big machine, which is not ideal because of the dust that it makes. And obviously I didn't really want to be doing this, but the reason I'm going to do it is because I need just one more of these. And the lack of the second one of these is what's holding everything up at the moment. So you have to do everything in certain order, you know. And it's all coming down to the second one of these being missing, which is really annoying. And I'm kind of kicking myself for not just making the second one straight away after the, making the first one, but as you can see, I started making something else. Um, so I'm going to try <laughs> doing this with a one millimeter end mill. Normally I would use two millimeters for carbon fiber uh, on the small machine at least, but part of the reason is because there's more chatter and vibration on that machine and having a sturdier end mill is a little bit more advisable, I think, but on this spindle, might be able to get away with just one millimeter. And another reason to use one millimeter instead of two is that it'll be, in theory, half as much dust, I think. This spindle um, blows air out of the corners of this um, mount. It's just a huge heat sink, uh, so that's not ideal. But uh, yeah, half as much dust should be tolerable, I think. And you can see I've done a few little cuts there just to check speeds and how much dust was going to come up. And I was also checking how much the end mill was bending, trying not to get it to bend at all, at least not visibly. Um, so I'm kind of hopeful that it might be able to get through this at half a millimetre step down. Uh, probably, probably won't, but I have another one. So hopefully between this end mill and the second one, if that one breaks, uh, between the two of them, I'm really hoping that we should be able to get at least that much done. Okay, so that worked out pretty well. There wasn't actually that much dust, at least not much dust left on here. It's a bit hard to tell how much got like blown around the garage. <laughs> but there's just about that much there and then some there. And it seemed like about half of the dust was actually in the groove there that I just vacuumed a little bit. Um, and the pieces over here turned out pretty nicely. And surprisingly, the tool didn't wear down as much as I thought because I was able to put a three millimeter screw through all those holes without too much trouble which means that they're you know the right size so it's kind of tempting now to use this to cut some more parts uh, but I think I'll, I'll just hold off on that because I did order some more tool bits the two, two millimeter ones uh, from that place in Germany that I got them from last time really nice ones like diamond coated ones they work really well, so I'll just wait until those get here, because th this piece was really the only one I needed, so I'll just uh, leave it at that for now. So I just finished sticking those plates onto the front of the motor mount tubes, 
and that's where we're at at the moment. Oh, and I also put some little pegs, carbon pegs, in for these pieces that are going to connect just to locate the uh, outer section of the wing when it attaches there, just so that it doesn't twist, you know. And yeah, that's where we're, at, where we're at at the moment, and it's kind of weird. I feel like I've done tons of work, but when I look over here at the plane, it doesn't appear, outwardly at least, to have changed much <laughs> from that last clip that I showed you at the, at the end of the previous video. Um, but that was held in place with sellotape, everything. Um, so now it's all pretty much glued, which is a step forward. And we've got all of these other pieces are now ready to go, to be attached. And we've got the flaps, which was quite a bit of work. Um, so yeah, the actual main thing remaining is just to make the wingtips. And I'm hoping to do that in one machining operation. Well, double-sided, so multiple operations, but one piece. Uh, on the CNC machine, except for maybe the wingtip, I might leave the, a few centimeters off there so that I can maybe change it and try some different winglets or something. Um, yeah, but most of the work is actually done now, I think. Um, so, in the next video, we'll probably get it to the point where it will be ready to fly, I think. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. I'll see you next time.